Hey there, friend. Making big changes and transformation is messy. Yeah, like that's news. But when you're in the middle of it and you feel stuck, what do you do to get over it, through it, or around it so you don't quit? And at what point do you feel like you're going to be okay? I ask these questions and more in part two of my conversation with gal pal, Johnny Lloyd. Now, in part one, she shared her amazing story of transformation from homeless to senior executive and so many truth bombs. Oh my gosh, they were great. If you haven't had a chance to listen to part one, do some binge listening and check it out either before or after this episode. I mean, either way works. By the way, I always ask my guests to take my simple quiz to determine their nail color persona. It's really a fun way to get to know more about them. You can take my quick fun quiz too. You can identify your nail color persona and what to do when chip happens. All you have to do is go to livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz. That's livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz. Now, let's get to talking to Johnny again. Tired of so much chip happening? Discouraged by so much downer news? Weary from chronic crisis? Don't let the chips keep you down. Welcome to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast, where the tips of your fingers and toes are ready to inspire you to not give up and to keep creating the business, career, and life you want. In each episode, we flip the chip and let our fun nail color with that crazy fun name cheer us on to remember our strengths, embrace the power of choice, see life as an adventure, and know resilience is only a touch-up or change-up away. Get ready for a good time and a good laugh with your host, Mary Foley. I've known you several years now, and um, the thing is, Johnny, um, I can't imagine you any different than you are today, right? Because this is my point of reference. And, um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you're loving, you're insightful, you laugh easily, and it's all showing up right now. But at what point did you know you were going to be okay and make it through this process of being a creepy crawly, you know, on the ground to then the cocoon to then beautiful flying butterfly? You know, there, there's a point at which you got to go, I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be all right. You know, um, there was a point that that I uh, walked away from my government job. You know, people at 23 years working for and being at the level in the uh, senior level executive position then. And I said, no, I'm just going to quit. And they say, quit? Uh-huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> my boss said, are you, are you crazy? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm with you, Johnny. But this is what happened. I had because of all the transformation and everything I'd been through, I was not, um, I didn't have a limited mindset. Now, now, trust me, there was some praying and a whole bunch of other stuff going on for me to do this, but my daughter was in college. She had just went off to college at Virginia Tech. Woo, hokey. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, <clears throat> and I quit and went and became, um, a CFO for a, what ended up being a multi-million dollar megachurch. I worked for them. And during that process, another layer, uh, I ended up building businesses at this 100,000 square foot complex, uh, renovating space and all of that revised and revitalized, right? So one of my spaces for rent, for, um, for transformation is to transform a grocery store into a church. When I saw that process, I could identify with the tearing down of things Mm. and the building up of things with a vision, a plan, because remember you're doing it based on a plan. And I learned how to read plans and plumbing and electrical and all of that stuff, right? So the deal that I'm saying is our lives are the same way. We have all of those parts and pieces, the electrical, our minds, our will, our emotion, right? We have all of these pieces. And that is the way that um, I 
figured I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. I see that I can walk away from something that is good to go to something that is great. Now, I did that on faith. And I had a backup plan because you know I did, Mary, right? <laughs> because in the back of my mind, I said, I'm going to never be homeless again. Mm -hmm. and, and to answer somebody's question that may be in your audience, when do you, when do you become so comfortable that it doesn't impact you anymore? There are times in my life like during the pandemic, there was a time I said, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And then, so you set up things in your life to make sure that when that is triggered, you have an answer. Mm. So I answer my automatic negative thoughts that may Christ creep up and say, okay, Johnny, you hit it. You know, you're making this big decision or you, you may be or scared or fear. You have to be able to speak to that thing so you can tame it. Because if you don't tame it, what happens is, is it tries to control you. So that's what I do. I look at it, Mary, even, you know, like I said, there's a certain dollar amount that I have to, that I'm more comfortable with when it's in my, my checking account or my savings account sure. or whatever. Yeah. So there's some things I put in place as an emergency fund. I teach that. You need to have an emergency fund. You know, you need to have a plan and you need to realize that what you do is not the all encompassing of who you are. I am an accountant. However, I am a speaker. I'm all of these other things too. I'm not one thing. So then having multiple streams of income is something that I do to make sure that I'm all, that I feel good uh, regarding or at peace. But all of those things have helped me help others build, grow wealth and transform their lives. Mm. So even though I'm extremely comfortable um, in a place where I can make decisions or I can stay at home, you know, but why stay at home when you're so full, when there's so much in you that you, and you see so much value in other people? Mm -hmm. To me, it was like having a gift and people, have them. People have gifts that they don't share with other people. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about packages. I'm talking about us. We are a gift that is so worth sharing with other people. And there are people that need our smile, need our encouragement, need a kind word. And so that's the part that causes me to be at peace about no matter what. Because if something happened tomorrow and everything that I thought I had laid up disappeared, I'm telling you, this chick in front of you can recreate it. <laughs> well, that's what I was, you know, and I'm so glad you said that because as I was listening to you, I'm hearing, yeah, I'm not homeless anymore. Yeah, I know I have some wealth or I have some money. I have some funds. I'm being responsible with it. When I'm making a change, it's not that I'm going, oh, because I have this money, I'm all right. I'm hearing, you know what? Your real resource fundamentally is, you know, you can come up with new plans. You know, you can follow a path. You know how to create something new and more so that if all the money went poof and it was gone, you go, well, that sucks. But what have I got to work with now? I got me to work with. I got, right. I've got the ability to create new plans. And right. that's huge. That's powerful. That deserves yeah. a nail color, you know, <laughs> a special <laughs> one, right? <laughs> um, wow. Well, you know, in your book, you say that the best place to start transformation is by becoming more aware of yourself. Because a lot of this has to do with elevated awareness. It didn't all come at once either. You know, you're laying on the floor, you're you're sad, you're you know, you're just exhausted. I'm sure and and frustrated. There's a certain awareness of your feelings and your state. But then, as time went on through the cocoon, there's other awareness. You know, I, that's why I really like our nail color because the nail color is a fun reminder of our true authentic self. It's just a reminder. Right. And it can be a reflection of that's why you do the nail color persona and you go, oh, that's so me. Right. Like we were saying, but what, especially when we're going through a major shift. 
what are some ways we can increase our self-awareness so that we can direct our own lives? Wow. Um, one of the things that I encourage everybody to do is spend quality time with you. Invest in you. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about buying something. I'm talking about invest in the way you think and what you desire. Know you. Turn the TV off. Turn the social media off. Who are you? Because those platforms can cause me to look at what I'm not, but not value who I am. And you are unique. Every person has their own fingerprint. You are unique and you were designed that way. So the question is spending enough time with you to identify what you want. And I'm not talking about just things. And like, where do you see yourself in 12 months or three years from now? And I'm not talking about the house. I'm talking about where do you see yourself when it relates to not just things, but your time, your impact. Where do you see yourself? And that starts by knowing who you are, not what you do, but who are you? Mm -hmm. when, every, when all the lights are off and you know, you're know sitting by yourself, can you handle that? Mm -hmm. Can you be with you and be happy? Just you. Mm -hmm. So I think those, that's the best place to start and those are the tips. And then the other thing is get a posse, get a group of women and people that encourage you and they'll tell you the truth. Mm. They're not like, gonna let you walk around with uh, your 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 skirt tucked into your underwear and not tell you, girl, <laughs> <laughs> or spinach in your teeth, or or lipstick that kind of went askew on your on your, you know, right? Exactly, yeah. They're gonna let you know when your nails be like, girl, you need to you need a redo on that. They're gonna let you know in love, mm -hmm. and stop comparing yourself. Stop using other people's lives as your comparison point. You run your race in your lane. Do you know you win? If you stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get in my lane, well, we got problems. <laughs> you're in my way. But as long as you're in your lane running your race, yes, you see other people. But the real key is stay focused. Because, and that's the last point I'll say is on, on this, I'll say where the focus goes, your power flows. Where your focus goes, your power flows. So if you're looking in your rear view mirror and trying to drive forward, you're going to be in an accident. So look forward, understand what happened, happened. Gain the insights from it, learn from it. But if it's what you did, but it's not who you are, Stop claiming it and move forward. That's what I would say. Mm. Uh, you know, that made me think about what you said earlier about your history. Uh, don't ditch it all, but bring only bring parts forward that are going to help you. And realizing that some of the pain, perhaps, of the past wow. is what you, not to bring forward the pain, but the what you learned from that, the insight yeah. you gained, the strength perhaps that you, in particular, that you gained. That's worth pulling forward. I know that from my own uh, past marriage, I thought I would not have signed up for this program. However, no one can take away from me what I have gained going forward. So mm -hmm. it's it gave me a strength that I think was there, Johnny, but had not been tested to that extent. So, you know, it was, I thought you know, it was a crucible, crucible of course in the laboratory is this little, you know, saucer that has all these different metals or components. And that, you know, like almost like a rock, think of a rock or something like that, that has mm -hmm. metal embedded in it, but it has to be heated up. And the other parts of the rock kind of have to be, you know, go up in flames in order for the precious metals to, to remain. 
And that's what I thought of it as, just burning away the stuff that I carried along, and no longer served me and, and doesn't matter anymore. Um, or what I have, what I have left, which makes me think of, you know, it's still not easy, right? And it's still, no. you know, uh, as a caterpillar, you still get to that cocoon and then it's still within the cocoon. I mean, I actually have seen pictures and, and video of uh, a cocoon on the outside and you can uh -huh. see movement, right? It's like squirming around, right? This thing is squirming around or and jerking around, not all the time, but has these moments. And it made me feel, uh, think about this idea of getting stuck. Because mm. all of us get stuck in this transformation process. Um, sometimes we don't even realize we're in transformation process, right? But we get stuck and we, because life is hard. You know, even when we're moving towards something good and we're also, you know, healing and, and going to that next level, it's, it's tough and it can, you know, be overwhelming at, at times. So I'm just curious, did you ever feel stuck and what did you do about it? How'd you get over it, through it, around it, so you didn't quit? Um, first of all, I think um, failure is something that I know even in the middle of everything. And uh, I've failed at things. I've uh, started something and didn't write. So the reason I don't quit is because I believe in the long-term vision. So the question now is when I'm in the midst of something and it's not working out because failure is never final until you say it's final, right? And, and when you look at Edison, Edison had 10,000 plus tries before he did the iridescent light bulb. So what he looked at, he said, no, I found 10,000 ways not to do it <laughs> to come up with the way to do it. And that's kind of my mindset. So the way that I look at this, Mary, is based on my mindset. The reason I won't quit is because every day, do you hear me, ladies? Every single day, I intentionally feed my mind. I intentionally take time in the beginning of my day to meditate, to, to look at my day, to look at my life, and to be grateful. Because when I'm grateful for where I've been and what is happening, it gives me a new light on what is happening. Because this is what I, one of the things I say, I said, you know, the, between the promise and the present, you know, because we, we all headed towards the promise, right? There's a plan, you know, right? You got a plan and you have the promise. So in between there is the process. The process. It's where the pain is. The process is connected to the procedure. The process sometimes causes me to lay down and have surgery on me to start dealing with me. So that's what, yes, I've been stuck. Absolutely. <laughs> and there's some days every day. Like I said, um, I stopped shitting on myself. <laughs> and we said, we went best to make sure we understood that said, S -H. She should. Yeah, she said should. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, shooting on myself. And 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 I learned that from uh, my daughter. And she said, Mommy, you know, that word is just so, you know, you don't like words like that. I'm surprised you use that. So now I said I could have, instead of like when I get up and let's say I could have gotten up two hours earlier, I could have. But I obviously made the decision not to. So I'm not going to deal with what. I should have done, I'm going to deal with the present moment. So the gift that I can give to anybody is to tell them to be present in the moment. To be present in the moment. To enjoy the nail color you have on. And when my nail color is different, you don't have to reach over for my nail color. I can enjoy your nail color and mine and still be and still enjoy the moment i don't have to start wanting for something i don't have i can enjoy what i do have mm -hmm. so that is the place that causes me uh to look at myself and say okay johnny right now you're drifting that's the being stuck for me i'm drifting because on a raft 
you call it life or whatever you want to call it on this on this raft there is still a motion that happens but when it's not going in the direction to to go for the purpose that i know or the goal that i know that i have before me then i am wandering so i look at what's going on every day and i give myself grace to have shut down or grace to sit down and be at peace and not do anything, you know, give myself grace. I don't have to always be in production, right? I'm not an industry, I'm a human being. And so, no, the house doesn't always look perfect. No, everything is, my hair can be extremely happy. <laughs> Y'all can't see it, but it can yeah. be extremely happy. I have, I've seen all kinds of hairdos on you. They all look good. Just so, just so. <laughs> but the, and so again, embrace where you were at, whatever it is, embrace it. I'm not saying stay in it. I'm saying enjoy the moment and then make the decision of where you go next. Because it's GPS. You're right here right now. And then control. Get the get the coordinates of where you are and then follow where you need to go next knowing that there's going to be roadblocks there's going to be some fairies in the way if you don't if you don't say avoid fairies it's going to take you to a fairy one day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> getting you across the river like you know? to say that's yeah exactly that that kind of fairy yeah so but that's what i would say that's great uh, you know this is about what you've just shared and reframing these negative thoughts is about flipping the chip. That's my way of saying it, right? Love and it. saying, hey, chip happens. We, we get stuck. You know, you're going to have roadblocks. There's going to be a ferry that you go, oh, I, it's going to take a lot longer to get across this, this particular piece uh, of the roadway, which isn't a roadway. It's all waterway. And what you've just said is, is how to start flipping that chip. That's what I really heard how to, and this thing of every single day intentionally feeding your mind and being grateful. That sounds like just a foundational thing that you do that enables you in this process uh, to, to, to know what I need to change in this moment or how I need to respond. Do I need to take care of me? Do I need to respond to something else? Do I need, it? and I, it can be hard to be present in the moment. It is, it is a learned thing i think anybody who says well you know i can i know i'm living in the in the in the present most of us are living in the past that's where most of our thoughts are for most of us are and many of us say well i'm always living in the future when i get there and and it's you know the future may never come and the past could hold us back so now is what we have but we do create our future now right in our thoughts mm -hmm. so so that's just a just powerful. Maybe that's what happens in the cocoon, right? Maybe that's what's happening to the caterpillar. The caterpillar is like, mm, I got to be present here. I can't go out and get, uh, I really got it like Uber Eats, but they don't deliver here. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, let me focus. Let me focus. Like, how am I feeling now? I'm feeling really hungry. Okay. Well, how, who knows how they have, do I have to eat part of my body? I might have to, I'm not sure who knows what's going on in their head. Right. So of course we can all have the chatter and I'm just making stuff up, but Maybe it's just be gracious, just Jill. We're gonna, we're just gonna sleep in today, like you said, because the mind and the body and the soul need it. Oh my gosh, we are out of time, um, Johnny. This has just been so fun. So I got two quick last questions for you. For the gal pal listening, who is feeling worn out, that's the state she's in right now, and she or she's feeling anxious, or she's got doubts that she was ever meant to be a butterfly. What would you say to her? In my book, I have affirmations. Affirmations are to affirm your new truth. So for the for the person that you just identified, and, and I'm going to tell you the truth, I've been there. And there's still days that I, I walk in that road, right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> so there, yeah. Right. So I affirm what I want. And so this is the thing. Affirmation is an I am statement, present tense saying what you want. Like I say, I am healthy, right? So I say that, but what if you, in your life, you don't feel like you're healthy? 
So then there's the word of the new one for me that's not in the book is information. What if I am? Because what that does is triggers your mind. Because remember, we didn't talk about it, Mary, but our mind does not like change. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Nor does our, our emotions. We're like, no, no, no. Yeah. We might get eaten by the alligator. All right. All right exactly. Let's, let's just pull back here. Everything's fine. Everything's cool. You're like, even though it's painful, but I know what the pain is, right? The kind of a thing. Right. Exactly. We don't like change. So it's what if I am healthy? And so what that does is that triggers your brain to say, hmm, it gives it, poses it in a question and causes your brain, your subconscious and conscious mind to start working on what if I am healthy? So for the people who are looking at the like low self-confidence, because of what they've been through, what they're going through, whatever the situation is. There are amazing books. I'm a Napoleon Hill instructor, and he has a book called Self-Confidence Formula. Uh, there are other books out there. What I would do is feed, don't feed, don't say, well, I have these 15 things, I'm working on all 15 at once. Which thing that you're dealing with right now is impacting you in such a way that you feel immobilized? that you feel like this one thing is the thing that is urgent in your life. It could be your financial well-being. It could be your spiritual well-being. It could be your emotional well-being. Don't forget you can get help. You are not alone. So when you're in a state and you feel stuck, there are times, I mean, I've, I've paid for coaches. I have went out and got free information. Do what it takes to get you to the next level because you're worth it. And that's what the affirmations are about, to remind yourself that you are worth it. And all you have to do is shift your mindset because whatever you think in your mind, you bring to your reality. You speak it, you think it, then you say it with your mouth, whether it be negative or positive, and then suddenly you're painting the picture. So. Think of what you're doing and say, what picture am I painting? What chapter am I writing? And remember that you're in control. You can change the story in the next chapter or the next picture just by what you do as a response or decisions you make. Well, there we go. Yeah, now we're at 485 in terms of truth. Problems. All right. And uh, that that's amazing. I love that very subtle but significant i don't even want to call it twist but yeah. way of going from affirmations to informations so you're mm -hmm. giving asking questions to to uh get the information new ideas uh into your thought process as the as the beginning this has just been great johnny thank you so much i i feel so uplifted i feel like i got some uh I think my wings have had a little bit of a tune-up. That's what I'm thinking. All right. Um, and I love the fact that you said, got to have a posse, right? Got to have a posse. And um, if right now, by just listening listening to this podcast, you feel like, all right, I, I got some posse in a way through this podcast, um, that would be that would be great from our conversation for, for those listening. But for those who want to find out more about you or to reach out, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, two ways. The one, the best way is to go out to my website, which is johnnyloyd.com. That's J-O-H-N-N-I-E-L-L-O-Y-D.com. And you'll see my YouTube channel and all that. So to have fun, I have a lot of fun on my YouTube channel. So please join my YouTube channel. Uh, but more than anything, stay connected even to Mary on this for the information, for the revelation that's going to happen as uh, she moves forward. I'm so excited. And thank you, Mary, again, for having me. Oh, well, you, that was gracious for you to say. I, I, I appreciate that. And, and I want everybody to know, I'm going to put your website and I know your, and your YouTube channel link in the show notes. So anyone can just quickly just scroll through and click on it and get, get more Johnny because who doesn't want more Johnny Lloyd is what I want to know. Okay. Uh, Cause we're, all of us are always transforming 
from something to where we're going, like it was something to something else. We always have a next level. And that's mm -hmm. what I love about this. The fun never ends. Once, because once you experience it at first, you're like, oh, wow, this, this is amazing. This is amazing. It's a cool, it's a very cool feeling. And I know that there's so many gals, you're listening and you're like, I've been there. I've had moments. And part of this podcast is to cheer you and to keep, help you to keep keeping on. And, you know, let your nail color cheer you on. It is something you change. You can change your nail color. You can put it on. You can take it off. You can also use it to help you in the transformation process in the moment. So um, I got a nail color for you right now. Nail color name. All right. I just thought of this, Johnny. All right. Your next red with a little shimmer, a little glitter is called Transformation Truly. I love it. I love it. Okay. So if you like go next time and you're looking at a color and you love this red, and you look at the color name, right? You check out the name and you're like, doesn't do it for me. Might even have some bad energy. You can change that energy and say, this is my experience. I'm going to call it transformation truly or truly I'm transformation. Do that. You, you know, you can, we can, you can play with that. But I, it's true transformation. And I love that you helped us today do that. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, wow. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. Part two with Johnny Lloyd. And it's just a great way as we go into my new flip the chip segment to reflect on one way that she shared about how she flipped her challenge into something positive. And one of the things that really struck me was when I asked her about how did she reframe negative thoughts into positive ones? And she had Three things that I thought really stood out, and I want to add a fourth. And the first one is, she said that every single day to intentionally feed your mind and be grateful. And, and that is taking some time to feed your mind with something positive. And she said on something on the area of your life that's most urgent, like where you feel like you're hurting the most, maybe where your negative thoughts tend to go to the most, and feed your mind, and you could use a podcast like this, you could use um, a book, you could use your own journaling, but you're doing something where you're like, I'm going to take a moment and put some positive things in on this topic because it's really bugging me the most. All right. And then she said, also be grateful. And that's the reflection part too, in that intentional time, be grateful of what's going right. Because no matter how great life is going, well, there's always some things we wish were better or different. And no matter how bad things are going, there's always some things that are going right. And so focusing on what's going right can really give us some juice because we remind our brain and we re-engage our heart that not all is lost. There's some good stuff too. So that was one thing that she did. The second thing she said is be present in the moment. You know, that's not as easy as it sounds, but to even have the, the, the aspiration to be more present in the moment, because, you know, all we can do is respond to the moment. And so often our minds drift to the past of either past hurts or past situations, or just, I wish it was better then, and I liked it better then, or some loss. And then sometimes it drifts to the future. Oh, it's going to be better when this happens, or when I go on vacation, or when I get this new job, or when my business grows, or when I have that baby, or when my grandchildren come, or just always something in the future. And we miss the moment. But more than just missing the moment, we don't get a chance to get the goodness in that moment, which is positive as well. So she really, when I heard her talk, I really heard her say, just be with the person that you're with or be in the activity that you're, you're working on or you're focused on. And, and that actually, if we can do that in that practice more and more, you know what? It frees us up from being pulled down and bombarded with negative thoughts that want to distract us. So that was her second thing, be present in the moment. The third, she says, was be gracious to yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, another way I say this is progress, not perfection. Oh, 
I am not necessarily a perfectionist, but man, I like the things to go well. Man, I like a certain level of standard of excellence, but even more so, I just would rather it not be hard, you know? And well, life is kind of hard. It just, it just is. But when we're in transformation and we do see some progress, you know, it spurs us on, it spurs me on. Uh, I was recently decided to engage in a uh, a, a better way of eating. I wanted to become the lean, mean, fat burning machine. You know, I, I, you may not be able to relate to this, but you know, you get to a certain age and the things you did before, the way you ate before the exercise, it just doesn't work in the same way. And I was struggling to find a new way. And, uh, and so I tried this new program uh, that really is focused on being lean. I love the name of it. And that theme of progress, not perfection, came up again and again and again. And I am so glad I stuck with it because I have made progress I can feel good about. Am I where I want to be yet? No, but I feel good that I've got a path that's working. Oh my gosh, that motivates me to stick with it. And the same can be for whatever you're trying to transform in your life. And the fourth thing, that Johnny didn't really say, but I'm going to add to it is pick a nail color name and uh, well, nail color and, and pick a name for that nail color, whether it's already on the bottle or already on the box um, and make sure that name and that color cheers you on, inspires you in some way in the transformation process. And it's a little thing, but I think it's the thing, the little things that spur us on in the bigger work we're trying to do in our lives that really can make a big difference, a significant difference. And so whether it's even naked nails, you can call it naked or you can say, I'm being more of my true authentic self as I go through this change. Make it work for you because, hey, the tips of your fingers or toes and your toes, they're always with you. So it's something that you can use deliberately and intentionally to inspire you. Hope that helps you in flipping your chip. And I look forward to being with you again. Thanks for listening to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast. Ready to live and laugh more? Know a friend who could use some of that too? Then subscribe at livelikeyournailcolor.com or your favorite podcast app. And share this episode right now with the person who popped into your mind. Together, let's flip the chip to be stronger, smarter, and happier. Mm -hmm.